Glad to have you with us for Kids Zone today. I'm glad you're with us for our next lesson in our series, Disciple Me. Now, I know that you watch movies that have villains in them and you hear stories. So let's talk about some super villains for a couple of minutes and some of their weapons. You know, they are known for sometimes they have devastating or maybe not so devastating super weaponry. You know, some of their secret, secret weapons are big and powerful, like the Death Star from Star Wars. You've seen the damage that that can do if you've watched any of the Star Wars movies. And then other weapons can be not so grand and tend to even be a little bit ridiculous. You know, like the various innate or devices created by Dr. Doofenshmirtz on Phineas and Ferb. Some of those are just so ridiculous that they're silly, right? Secret weapons are not only the work of fiction, though. If you were to go to Washington, D.C. and visit the International Spy Museum, you'll see some amazing weaponry, some secret weapons, including some umbrellas and even lipstick tubes that are actually functional guns. Well, like the innators of Dr. Doofenshmirtz and the Death Star and Gru's Freeze Ray, these secret weapons were made for one, purf one purpose, so that the person who's carrying it has an advantage if they run into an enemy. Now, as believers, as Christians, we know that we have an enemy that is constantly trying to trip us up, right? Do you know his name? Do you know who he is? He goes by different names. Sometimes we call him Satan the devil, the enemy, you know who we're talking about, right? Whatever you call him, the devil, the enemy, Satan, he wants to do everything he can, not to kill us, but to cause us to sin. You know, if the devil can make us look bad through our sin, he can disgrace us in front of other people, and they won't want to have any part of knowing Jesus. So that's what he wants to do. He wants to make us look bad in front of others. So they want to have no part of being a Christian, of knowing who Jesus is. Well, thankfully, God has given us a weapon to defend ourselves as believers. This weapon is no secret, though, but it is powerful enough to repel temptation and, and at every turn. And it's smaller than a freeze ray but bigger than a lipstick taser. 
It's a Bible. You may think, that's a strange looking weapon. But as we'll see today, it is the Bible, the Word of God. It's the only weapon we need against sin. This is Jesus, Hey-o! who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth, where he grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. Oh, I see. Jesus was baptized by John, and God showed John that Jesus was his chosen one. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness among the wild animals. Oh, hey there, friend. For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus didn't eat anything. So he was hungry. Satan came to him and said, Hey, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus knew God's word, and so he answered, No. The Word of God says people don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so Jesus passed the first test. <laughs> then Satan took him to Jerusalem and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. Aww. For the Word of God says he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Wait. But Jesus said, the Word of God also says, you must not test the Lord your God. Now. And so Jesus passed the second test. So Satan took him to the peak of a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their glory. Satan said, I will give it all to you if you kneel down and worship me. But Jesus said, Get out of here, Satan, for the word of God says you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. <laughs> then Satan went away, and angels came and took care of Jesus. And so Jesus passed the third and last test. How many of you guys, guys love to play board games with your family? How many of you love to play Monopoly? Monopoly is one of the most popular board games of all time and everyone has their own strategy for playing. Some people go for certain properties on the board, like the high traffic, orange and red. Some people go for uh, to collect all the railroads. And some people try to shoot to get uh, the boardwalk. Smart players know that one of the most important things in Monopoly is mo money management. They know that some extra cash at the right moment can be a game changer. Some people stash some of their money under the board, just like this, so uh, they don't accidentally spend it. It's their secret weapon to be used at just the right moment. You know, God has, a, has us not a so secret weapon to defend ourselves against sin. The Bible has all the information we need to recognize and avoid sin before it can trip us up. Get to know your Bible well, and there's no temptation the enemy can use that will lead you astray. Hi, boys and girls, welcome back. I hope you've been working on your memory first. I hope you got it down on your mind. Do you? Do you? I'm sure you do. It's out of 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. It says, therefore encourage one another and build each other up. Just in fact, just as, in fact, you are doing. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. God is hoping that, or, that you are already building each other up, which means that you're making each other feel good, and you're encouraging one another. Do you like to be encouraged? I know you do. So do I. I like to be encouraged. And I like it when people try to build me up instead of put me down. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to build people up, and he wants us to encourage each other. And I'm hoping you're already doing that, and I hope you'll keep this in your memory, 
and you'll work on this memory verse and put it to your heart and put it to your life. All right, thank you, boys and girls. The Bible may not seem like much of a weapon when you look at it. it might be different colors. The one I have today is pink. Maybe the one at your house is black or brown or a different color, but you look at it and you think that doesn't really look like a weapon. I mean, most Bibles are small enough that a child can carry them with no trouble. You may think that the Bible is just a book, but the Bible is more than just a book. It is the very word of God and the word of God is full of power. In the Bible, in the book of Hebrews chapter four, verse 12, it tells us that the word of God is, is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword. Again, Paul writes in the book of Ephesians, when he talks about the armor of God, he refers to the Bible as the sword of the spirit. A sword is a weapon, isn't it? Clearly, God has a plan for us to use his word as a weapon to defend ourselves against sin. So how do we use the Bible? To defend ourselves. We start by learning what the Bible says. We need to spend time every day reading, learning, finding out what the Bible has to say. See, if you were to talk to someone who was really good about firing a gun, who knew how to fire a gun, and you would talk to them about how they got to be so good, how they learned how to fire that gun, they would tell you that they spent a lot of time at the shooting range practicing to fire a gun, learning how to aim it at the target. It wasn't something that just automatically happened. They had to work to be good at it. It's the same way with learning how to use the Bible to fight against sin. It's something that we're going to have to work at. We work at it by getting into God's word, learning about him, reading it, spending time in it every day. Um, we can also study it with others. We hear it whenever we come to church and we listen to our teachers in class and also the preacher in church. When you listen to the videos on KidZone, we talk about things that are in the Bible every time. Another way is by learning and memorizing scripture. You know how on our videos every week, Donnie spends time trying to show you a memory verse. We don't just do that just to fill up our videos. That's because we want you to learn God's word and know it so whenever that you are tempted or you have a feeling that is discouraging, you can remember some of the things that we've tried to help you learn to know God's word, to have it memorized so that in an instant you can recall something from the Bible to help you when you're tempted. See, the more that we know our Bibles, the better prepared we are to defend ourselves. We'll be able to stand up against sin to peer pressure. Do you know what that is? Peer pressure is when the people around you, your peers, try to encourage you to do the wrong thing. And you feel like you have to join in just to be accepted, just so you don't feel weird, so your friends will like you. You need to be able to have the Word of God hidden in your heart and know it so you can fight against those temptations. Also, any temptation that you that the Bible that the devil sends your way any temptation, whether from your peers or something that you see, we know when we know God's word and we're willing to use it, we can fight off that temptation. Just like Jesus did in the, in the video that we watched, that the, we saw how Jesus fought off Satan by using the word of God. See, the Bible is a weapon that we can use to defend ourselves against sin. And it is way more powerful than a freeze ray or even our death star. It is the living word of God. And unlike those villains secret weapons, it will never fail. Let's end with prayer. Let's end this part with prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for your word and help us to realize that it is much more than just a book. It is our weapon against sin. Help us to get to know you more and get to study your word, that we may be able to fight off the temptations that we face every day, that we'd be able to recall things that we've studied, and that when we're tempted to do something wrong, when a thought enters our mind, we'll be able to fight it off with your word. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, boys and girls, today we're playing Bucket! 
this is the championship. And today we got Ian and we got Hope here to play. And what they're going to do is they're going to have two chances to hit a ping pong ball in the bucket. And if they do, whoever does it gets them both in. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Okay? That's all I'm saying right now. Okay? All right. You ready? All right. All you need for this is ping pong paddle and ping pong balls. Okay? These are overgrown. Might need to see a doctor. All right, you ready? All right. Step out of the way on your mark. Get set, go. One. Oh, he got one in. All right, hope it's your turn. And here's our turn to be the, the ball catcher. Do you want, do you want chores? They don't matter. Oh, almost! It was that close, really. It was like that close, really. But I'm going to give you half a point. Half a point. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, you can play this at home. And I hope you enjoy it. And this is to remind us that the Bible, and remembering the Bible, is the best defense against sin. All right? Thank you, boys and girls. Bye! Oh, oh, he put an eye out. <laughs> Ow! Fun, fun, fun!